we got our residency in Paraguay and Alexandra and me were fortunate enough to win a sailing trip with Christoph Heuermann on his catamaran, the S2 Staatenlos, on an island close to Rio de Janeiro. We equipped our car for a long journey and drove all the way from Asuncion to the border of Brazil, not knowing if we could actually cross the border. Officially, the land borders are closed. No foreigners were allowed to enter the country at that moment. We crossed over the border bridge anyways, but now had to face Brazilian custom officials. Our first experience with Brazilian officials pretty much summarized our overall experience with Brazilian people. We entered the immigration office at the border, having missed the border crossing, having had to go back to the border to get an official stamp in the passport. Without that stamp, just being a Paraguayan resident, it wouldn't be a big deal being in the border region around the Iguazu waterfalls. Though, once you are deeper in Brazil, at a checkpoint, police could assume you to be an illegal immigrant in the country. So it is important to have a three months valid stamp in your passport. We wanted to get a stamp because we wanted to be official over here, but nobody looked like they were working. <laughs> uncertain if it was possible to get that stamp in times where the official Brazilian websites say that border crossings via land are currently not allowed for foreigners. We were standing in front of their kind of surprising looking immigration officials. It was already late in the evening and uh, we thought they didn't really expect some foreign tourists to show up at that moment. We explained our attempt to get a stamp in broken Spanish, because our Portuguese at that time was non-existent. To our pleasant surprise, the officials started to smile and gave us an excited feeling. Bamvenido a Brazil! They were excited that we wanted to see Brazil, examined our passports a bit and gave us the stamp. So, we have some stamp here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They happily explained that we can stay three months, then would have to leave for three months, and then we should totally come back another three months. No one was concerned about the apparent border closures for foreigners. They were just excited to have us. With that immediate positive experience, we continued our journey, fortunate that most of our troubles and worries of the past weeks were unfounded. We made it to Brazil. following days were a race against the time though. It was important for us to arrive in Angra dos Reis, just south of Rio de Janeiro, in time for our planned sailing week around the island of Ila Grande. We kept in contact with the skipper Josh and were confident we would make it in time. This meant 8 hours of driving every day for the next 5 days. So our first experience of the country were the fast streets in a way better condition than in Paraguay. And the relaxed Brazilian driving compared to Paraguay? I personally felt the Paraguayan style of driving already rubbed off on me. And now it was the other cars that were actually afraid of me on the streets. Crazy Paraguayos! Initially, uh, we were a bit worried about our foreign Paraguayan license plate. We thought it would stand out a bit and could cause us to have lots of unnecessary police stops. But in all our time in Brazil, that really just happened twice. The policemen always were very friendly and didn't really care much about our documents. They wanted to hear why we were in Brazil and then see the content of our truck, a small tour of our fully loaded vehicle, 
police them usually, and then they send us off with a boa viage. And enjoy Brazil! Generally speaking, driving in Brazil stayed a very positive experience. The five days of driving passed by really fast, especially when listening to lots of interesting audiobooks. In combination with a beautiful scenery, an exciting story or an informative non-fiction book can be the best companion for long trips. For this, we love Audible. Audible is an audiobook subscription service that gets you one audiobook per month. Even better, we teamed up with Audible and with the link in the description below, you support the Escape Diaries and get your first audiobook free of charge. So sign up right now and tell me in the comments what's your favorite audiobook and when do you like to listen to them. Notable on our trip was our stopover in the city of Londrina with the best steakhouse of Brazil, State Steak. I was generally hoping that South America would open the doors to some good beefsteaks, but I felt overall very disappointed about it. My last hope is Argentina, but they still have their land borders closed at that time. Sure, in the bigger cities in Brazil, you can find some steakhouses or churrascarias, grill places, but Brazilians generally speaking don't understand that steaks need to be grilled really hot and stay rare. Most traditional Brazilian places overcook their meat, which leads to an unsatisfactory chewy experience. So far, off all the time we spend in Brazil, the steakhouse Steak Steak in Londrina was my first and also really the best experience I've had food-wise in Brazil. Maybe some of you listening to this can point me to another Brazilian steakhouse that can upgrade my cuisine options. My favorite is a big rare ribeye steak with some good chunks of fat on it. But I'm happy with any beef steak that melts in my mouth. I'm looking forward to the suggestions in the comments. Another notable city we passed on our race to Rio was Sao Paulo. Unfortunately, we just had a few hours to hunt for food and then went right to bed. Driving there was chaotic but fun. Our car was much bigger than all of the others. That really helped when pushing them out of the way to clear the traffic. Overall, I felt like an interesting place to me. I really enjoyed it. Whenever we'll get a chance, we would love to come back someday. Eventually, we made it to Rio de Janeiro just in time, but over eager as we are, we arrived before the boat was actually ready. Also our skipper Josh had to tell us that there was a change of plans. Due to some time constraints with Christoph, we weren't actually meeting up in Angra dos Reis, south of Rio, but at the Marina Gloria in Rio itself. No problem for us. We are great at improvising. We took a hotel in Rio and enjoyed the beautiful view of the city. Rio has so many cool places to discover, a truly beautiful city with warm and happy people. It really seems like a place I could call my home for a while. Lots of nature, great living quality, just the weather was kind of surprising to us. Where was that heat that we were expecting? When we were leaving Paraguay, we were dealing with above 30 degrees Celsius, around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. But now in Rio, it was like 22, 24 Celsius. That's like 75 Fahrenheit. Not bad, but uh, a lot lower than we expected. I assume the weather will be satisfactory though once summer comes around again. But anyways, overall, Rio stayed in our hearts. If we just had one wish though, we would recommend 
to place more urinals throughout the city. It really stinks like piss on many street corners of the city. So just a suggestion. The day after our arrival, we finally moved on to the boat. Our first meeting with Josh the skipper was very pleasant. We moved our luggage into a cabin on the boat and parked our car at the airport parking for the days of our stay. That night we met some more people of the Staatenlos community and finally met Christoph after he came home to his boat from a helicopter trip through the skies of Rio. It is always a special feeling meeting someone for the first time that one had followed online for a while. We knew more about Christoph and, and his journey than he knew about us. His business and his trip is fascinating to us. And through his YouTube videos, blog posts and online community, we were able to learn a lot of helpful tips for our nomad journey. We went out for a welcoming dinner with him, his girlfriend, Alana, Josh, and the crew couple, Deborah and Eduardo. Also joining us, was German expat Michael with his wife, Priscilla, and his friend Alex. It was a great feeling to have so many people around us who have a similar mindset and attitude towards life. Throughout this whole current worldwide political fiasco, there's so much polarization going on with people. It's sometimes hard to have honest conversations with people you can trust. And this night gave us back that long lost feeling. The consecutive days on the boat were a bit more difficult. The boat itself had just come from a long journey across the Atlantic and after months of intensive use had some technically difficulties that needed to be attended to. We still managed to get a good day of boating out of her. How was your trip, sir? Nice, it was excellent. Incredible. Rio by boat was making our mouths water for more. We still have to be a bit patient though. The Staatenlos boat was going to get some major maintenance and would be out of service for quite some time. Christoph and Josh promised us to catch up with the rest of the sailing week as soon as the catamaran is going to set sail again. So yeah, we made it uh, to the Staatenlos boat. We are chilling on the boat right now. We were at the Sugarloaf Mountain and now we're going home to the marina, Gloria. This is my view right now. The night before his departure, Christoph gave Alexandra and me his promised business and nomad lifestyle coaching. We had no shortage of complex questions, but we're very happy to see that Christoph is knowledgeable in a wide variety of topics and knows the rules of the game on a worldwide scale. On our boating trip to the Sugarloaf Mountain, I was reminded of how life on my sailboat used to feel. Around the year 2014, I owned a 33-foot sailboat in Florida. I used to live on it for a few months and was planning a big trip through the Caribbean. Due to unforeseen circumstances at that time, I had to scrap those plans for a while. But not forever. One of my goals is still to get that boating vessel that is going to get me through the seven seas and lets me explore our world from pole to pole. So the big question for us is, obviously we want to buy a boat. So we're thinking a catamaran, just like the Staatenlos, or we could go with a traditional monohull like I had it before at a 33 foot uh, sailboat, an Outlander. This is a 40 foot boat. It's 
standing up in a boat is uh, crucial because I don't want to duck down. Maybe we should go bigger, you know, depending if you want to live there for longer. Why not? I'm not sure yet when, but as soon as it's going to happen, I will make sure that you guys will be able to follow along those adventures. The meeting with Christoph was full success for Alexandra and me and was well worth the adventure we took in order to make it to the consultation in time. We hope to see him and his crew again, sometimes in the near future, and are looking forward to the rest of our sailing adventure. With the completion of our Staatenlos Rio goal, we found some rest in some nice hotels in and around Rio for a few days to consider the next steps of our journey. Currently at this uh, rock, so this is like a huge rock I'm sitting on right now. We made it out here, uh, just escaping Rio for a few days uh, after the sailing. This is just beautiful here. And uh, down there is the very green sea. Uh, I was surprised how green the water here is. Uh, I guess especially when you come from uh, Mexico, Cancun, where everything is super turquoise blue. What's next? Uh, this is the big question that we are asking ourselves and uh, maybe you guys have some input for me. Uh, let me know. While Alexandra had a eight hour hair day, I used time to go running at the beach and collect my thoughts. Winter was coming. <laughs> it for sure wouldn't be a really cold winter, but we knew that the temperature would get warmer the further up north we would go. So there was our plan, north along the coast, until our three months of stay in Brazil was almost up. And then back to Paraguay, or at least so we thought. In no way we expected our journey to take such a different turn. Now with our drive north along the Brazilian coast, our adventures really just and began. The beautiful and hidden treasure island of Canavieras, the untouched nature of Brazilian fazendas in the jungles, the fascinating mountains that have never been ascended before. And hear about how our little DJI Mavic Mini drone was gaining popularity with locals. These and many more stories about our continued journey you will find in the next season of the Have Your Adventure Escape Diaries. With this inspirational journey continuing in the next season of the Escape Diaries, I want to make you aware of my current offer for a free online coaching session with me. With the Adventure Escape Diaries, you can follow my journey to personal freedom and now let's make your dream life possible as well. You want to talk to me about reaching your fitness goals, healthy eating on the go, or you need help emigrating from your country and finding a new home? I am here for you and can point you into all the right directions. Get inspired by this one-time session or join me for regular coaching. So go ahead, follow the link in the description and book your free appointment right now. I can't wait for you to plan your own escape and join the adventure.